What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, Master Rule 5 has been the talk of the Yu Gi Oh! community for the better part of a week now, and deservingly so. From what I've seen, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive, and players, including myself, are incredibly excited about the future of the Yu Gi Oh! trading card game. Many tubers have already discussed cards that are going to greatly benefit the Bahamut Sharks, Ultimaya Tazokens of the world, but there are going to be some cards, and I mean really great cards, that are seriously going to suffer because of Master Rule 5. In this video, I want to talk about those cards because I feel like this is going a little bit under the radar. Now, I will put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. I saw that House of Champs did a discussion. I didn't watch his video because I don't want to plagiarize other Yugi tubers, and that is not the reason why I made this video. I'm pretty sure a lot of tubers had this idea when Master Rule 5 was first revealed. So, I want to talk about some cards that are not going to be nearly as good as they were in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains era, and some cards you might want to get rid of ASAP. Number one, Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon. I really believe that this has been one of the most important monsters to the Cyber Dragon strategy and the competitive levels of success that it has seen throughout the Vrains era. And keep in mind, Cyber Dragons have reached as far as a top eight at a YCS level event. So it's not like they're a slouch when it comes to rogue strategies i actually feel like the the contact fusion as a whole has been critical to the amount of wins that cyber dragons have been able to stack up as a deck especially in formats that were largely defined by archetypes that are link based that kind of want to have one specific link monster in the extra monster zone think sky strikers salaman greats or orcus the reason that mega fleet dragon was so amazing during the brains era was not just because any of the main deck cyber dragon monsters could you know easily access it but it basically took away your opponent's extra monster zone monster and it did it in a way where you were always going to go plus one even if that monster had some level of protection basically nothing is immune to the contact fusion and even if your opponent did negate the summon they weren't going to get their monster back the fact that we're now moving into an era of Yu-Gi-Oh, where some synchro xc and fusion decks are not even going to be using the extra monster zone at all does not bode well for mega fleet dragon obviously you already had some matchups like that for instance true draco or guru control but what you didn't really want for this card is to have more matchups funneled into that category as well i kind of see situations where if you're not playing against something that is predominantly link based this card could be completely dead throughout the entirety of a duel Number two, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. This could easily be the single biggest drop monetarily that we see for a card in 2020. Considered to be amongst the elite and really best cards in the entire Savage Strike set, it seems like Fantastical Dragon Phantasme has always had a price tag very similar to how people kind of feel about the card in the community. At some points, people have called this an absolute staple and top two hand traps in the game, but moving forward, Forward to Master Rule 5, I'm not so sure about that. No one has ever questioned how powerful or how good Phantasme is when you're able to drop it. It, of course, having an effect that allows you to put a body on board, potentially fix your hand, and draw cards as a plus one package during your opponent's turn. The question moving forward is going to be, how consistently am I going to be able to summon it against my opponent? It's not just that you're going to be seeing a lot more C, Fusion, and Synchro-based decks. It's the fact that moving forward, those decks will not necessarily have to play Link Monsters at all. Let's just say, for example, at some point in this year, you were dueling against Thunder Dragons. If your opponent wanted to drop multiple Fusion Monsters on the field in a single turn, they were going to need to summon a Link Monster first. When your opponent summoned that monster, it would have given you the opportunity to respond with Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. This would have not only given you a monster on board, but obviously a plus one and an opportunity to fix your hand all at the same time. But if you look towards Master Rule 5, I've seen Thunder Dragons drop multiple Colossus and Titans. I'm talking four to five of those things in a single turn without ever actually using the extra monster zone or even thinking about summoning a Link monster. You're going to have a lot of matchups where these Fusion XC and Synchro decks do not summon Link monsters, and that really is a hindrance to this card. Before, they kind of had to summon them as kind of like a middle point now they don't at all 
Number three, Beat Raptor. This card looked like it had a whole lot of potential. I don't want to say that it was going to be on that anti-meta S tier alongside historical cards like Inspector Border, Fossil Diner, or Thunder King Ryo, but it definitely looked like it was going to be potentially a very strong piece for anti-meta stun decks. After all, not only could the card shut down any monster in the extra monster zone, it was like one of the first great anti-meta monsters that actually flowed into kind of like another resource of course when it's destroyed by battle it summons another copy of itself from your deck and against decks that wanted to go into their key link monsters in their first turn decks like orcus sky striker or salaman great it was very difficult for them to be able to out this card if they went and used their battle phase to attack over it well it could just summon another copy and if they went to their link plays their monsters weren't going to do anything even if you were going second you could just normal summon this card in the the second it hit the field it could shut down your opponent's monster in the extra monster zone this is actually really good against a deck like Orcus currently that just kind of ends on IP Mask Arena and then looks to turn that into disruptive plays against the opponent. But if your normal summon Beat Raptor, IP Mask Arena gets negated and whatever your opponent was going for, that play is pretty much out the window. I think Beat Raptor, it's going to kind of be a dead card walking, not just because the extra monster zone is going to be a lot less important, especially for these Synchro, Ixi, and Fusion based decks but also it's not a card that has that super high ceiling it doesn't have that dual utility disruption that things like thunder king ryo and inspector border offer inspector border has been known to be excellent against other control decks most notably something like ultra guys and even thunder king ryo that can be really useful against decks that like to search a lot like maybe true draco or decks like guru control no terraforming no pot of duality no critical search cards for you i don't really think that um beat raptor offers much other than it's kind of boss monster negation effect it's more or less a one trick pony and if you're not playing into a matchup that you can take advantage of it specifically it's just a vanilla 1400 or it might as well be Number four, Sum Summon Summoner. So I'll be quick about this one because it's not very complicated at all. Sum Summon Summoner was released in Soul Fusion alongside all the new Thunder Dragon support. Definitely not a coincidence. And it was a natural fit for the archetype. Not only could it be used to open up those extra monster zones, thus they'd be able to drop multiple fusion monsters in a single turn, but it also was good at just being fodder for the summon of a Titan or a Colossus itself. That's really nice when your link monster isn't just useful for opening up those link points but then even it could be turned into a much more powerful monster at pretty much no cost the problem with some summon summoner isn't that the card's going to be any worse than it was in master rule 4 it's just going to be unnecessary thunder dragons are not really going to have to go into link monsters to drop multiple titan and colossus in a single turn anymore so in all honesty whatever resources you use to make this card can be allocated for other options and honestly i think that some summon summoner is just unnecessary now Finally, number five, and I've actually got a couple of cards here. I decided to lump them together because they're both hand traps. They work fairly similarly. Let's talk about No Material and Watt Kinetic Puppeteer. We'll start with No Material because more people know about that card. I would say that um, like No Material was most notably known for being able to really shut down those link focused decks, decks that were completely combo oriented, because if you use No Material at the right time against the right monster, you could essentially clog up your opponent's extra monster zone think about using it on something like a nightmare mermaid your opponent would not be able to get that out of the extra monster zone it was also used against like luna light decks when they would go into outer entity narla before they went into azathot they'd be stuck with the narla and then they just like wouldn't have any plays for the remainder of the turn the problem is if your opponent goes for that same exact play chances are now in master rule 5 they're going to summon narla to a main monster zone meaning that if you use no material on it they can still do link plays because their extra monster zone is unoccupied even if you did hit other key monsters in the extra monster zone that's not stopping your opponent from potentially summoning other extra deck monsters in the main monster zone so i feel like no material is just a card that has pretty much um i don't know i think the writing is on the wall with the card what kinetic puppeteer 
was a little more niche, but it could be used against archetypes like Sky Striker. If your opponent had ended their turn, you could easily use Watt Kinetic Puppeteer, which is a quick effect. And you could actually take one of their Sky Striker monsters, put it in the main monster zone, and essentially turn off all their Sky Striker spell cards and kind of play however you wanted without the uh, disruption of those cards. Watt Kinetic Puppeteer was also useful in certain situations, making sure that your opponent's Link monsters wouldn't have things linked up with them. Think, for instance, if you were dealing with Salaman Greats and your opponent was trying to summon a Jack Jaguar to a Sunlight Wolf's Link Point, you could actually just move it to the main monster zone. The Jack Jaguar would fizzle, and then your opponent would not be able to add a fire monster from their graveyard to their hand. So you could kind of take out two birds with one stone. This card is going to have the problem that a lot of the cards on this list are going to have, and that is, I think that not only are those matchups going to be a lot less prevalent, but this card is really only effectively used against link based archetypes. If you're playing against a deck that's Synchro or Ixi, maybe even Fusion Focus, moving one of their monsters to another main monster zone isn't really going to do anything. If your opponent summons something like a Bahamut Shark, no longer are they going to be in a situation where they can only summon to one specific zone. That's totally awesome. Now, a lot of these archetypes have so much more room to work with that this card is very niche use is kind of been eliminated. But anyways, those are just some cards that I think might fall off a cliff for Master Rule 5 in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s era. If I missed out on any cards or you disagree, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.